Hey guys, it's Liddy here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I learned um, how to use a finger joiner bit on the router. So, let's get started. Alright guys, so welcome back. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed my last video on the simple circle sign. I had a lot of fun making that. Um, but my dad and I finally decided to order a finger joint bit um, that I actually have been watching lots of YouTube videos on lately. Um, it looks really cool. So we finally got it set up on the router and we did a couple of tests just to figure out how it actually worked. Um, and as you guys will see in the time lapses, we do put a piece of MDF on for um, one of the center pieces that we'll be gluing because I will be gluing three sections together of a pallet. And um, that is to raise up the wood a little bit so that they fit together perfectly. And it took a while for us to figure out um, the specific depth that we needed to change the actual piece of wood so that it would fit together. So I had a, uh, I believe it was like six millimeter MDF um, sheet that I just bought from Home Depot. And then we cut it to the size of the table and then we just planed it down until we um, got a perfect fit so that there was minimal planing needed um, after gluing the pieces together. And um, after that, uh, basically everything went smoothly. Um, as you guys will see, I make one board and then I decide to make another board um, and the second board, or actually it's the third board because there's two pine boards. The third board is a harder wood and for some reason um, that didn't go very well. It didn't glue together at all very well and maybe it's because the wood was too thin um, because these teeth on the finger joiner uh, are thicker. So I, we could order another finger joiner that has a super fine teeth. Um, so there's multiple. So basically for the boards that I have made, there's only like one one finger uh, basically showing because the boards were so thin. But the bigger or the thicker boards you get, the more stronger it's going to be. Um, but let's hop right into that. I'll stop talking for now and then we'll talk a little bit more at the end of the video. So as you can see here, I'm choosing um, some boards. I wanted to get all of them to be about the same length so I didn't have to cut very much off. Um, and then I just started joining, as you can see in the top left corner, joining one side to make sure that they were um, flush. And then as you can see here, I'm just cutting uh, the first one I cut. I cut both sides once again with the MDF. Um, and then the two outside pieces were going to just click into that part. Um, and uh, this actually gets really, really dusty, so there's a lot to clean up to do. But good thing I have a shop vac. So I just started gluing it up. Um, it was actually kind of hard to show the glue up. Um, it's really simple. I just put some glue in the grooves and then just use as many clamps as possible to try to keep it as flat as possible so I didn't have to plane so much off. Um, and there's the other board. That's the one I didn't show. Um, so there's the two pine. And then um, I just scraped off some of the glue and then decided to plane it down just um, enough so that it's flush. I didn't take very much off. I know it looks like a lot, but... Um, <laughs> it really didn't take a lot off. Uh, just these chips were a lot bigger than normal. Um, and so then that just got the board really flat. And so I just sanded it down a little bit more to try to get a smoother surface. And this just speeds up the process and once again makes the boards a lot stronger um, than it would just to be edge gluing them. So now I don't have to add it back to them once again. And I just wanted to square them up because some of them um, were angled a little bit like this one was. Um, and the bigger pine one wasn't very off. And so here's some powdered wood filler. Um, this is probably the best wood filler I've ever used. It really blends in and it dries pretty quickly and it's super easy to sand off. Um, and with the pine, it blends in very, very well because of the light color it is. And then I just went in and sanded that off once again. And the boards were basically finished. Super simple. And it was actually a pretty fast process. It only took about a day. Um, and then I just cross cutted uh, the edges off, the ends off with the cross cut sled um, just to make sure everything's nice and square. And I can always change the dimensions later when I'm actually um, cutting out the sign on the CNC. So here I am finding a piece of. Uh, two different color hardwood and I don't really know what kind of hardwood this is but I found this nice dark strip so I wanted to put that in the middle um, and just see how well that worked and they weren't very flat so I defined um, about the same uh, thickness boards and then I just planed them down or I joined them down as much as possible to try to get them to be actually flat. The darker piece in the middle was kind of bowed so I did have to join that down a little bit more than the others. Um, and then when I went in to actually join them, or 
do the joiner bit on them. It was a little weird because they were so thin, um, once again, like I talked about in the beginning, but I did the outsides normally, and then the middle one gets a double on both sides. Um, and as you can see here, they weren't gluing up very well, and things didn't look right. I'm not sure why it did this, um, but this is just a closer-up look of um, what could happen if they don't fit together. I'm not sure why everything was normal and it worked for all the other woods, um, but once again, I'm not sure what happened here. Um, so hardwood is a little bit harder for me to join. I'm going to keep testing and keep you guys updated on my Instagram, but other than that, the hardwood was no good, but the, the plywood boards worked just fine. Okay, so first before I show you guys the boards that we made in the video, I do want to show you the first board that I did um, after testing, and this one is really cool. So as you can see, there are a bunch of different pieces in here. They're not just um, longer pieces like I did in the video. Um, these were just short cut-off pieces from the pallets um, that I when I would when I was cleaning them all off, and this looks super cool. Obviously, there are some tear outs and stuff in here, but um, this is also what you can do with a finger joiner. So one of the main reasons I got this was so that I can make boards like this longer or more make pieces like this longer by adding another piece on the end. Um, so I will mostly be doing that, but if I have a long enough board or long enough two pieces here like this one, um, then I will just glue boards together. But this is what makes a finger joiner really cool because you can make really awesome um, boards like this and it gives them a lot of character and just um, is very, very eye-catching. So this was probably my favorite finger-jointed board, even though I've only made like four. And um, But I do recommend joining your boards like this. Obviously, it's not going to be super strong, but if you finger joint everything, as you can see here, there's a finger, there's a finger, and then this is one of the side ones right here. Um, and you can just, it just looks cool because of the different colors, but also um, because they're paneled together. And so after um, plain, I basically glue them together once again, and then I plane them down and sand them a lot to make them look really nice. Some of them come out with gaps, but that just gives character to the board. And if I mess up on a board, I can just paint, fill that board. And if the filler doesn't look like the wood, then I'll just paint over it and then use it as a different wood or different board. But this is one of the signs. This is probably my favorite wood. I know it's just pine, but um, it's a great color. It looks really nice. And I did have some gaps, which you guys saw I filled, but um, you can barely see them. I mean, it really blends in with the wood uh, very well. And this board is a decent size. This was um, just three panels once again glued together. And then this was another one. This was two big panels glued together. So the other one was three, and this one was the two bigger ones. And um, this did pretty well, but besides, um, after I planed it down a little bit, you can see... There's a little bit uh, of like a glue mark there, but I tried to sand it down. If I really wanted to, I could just keep planing it down. But the more you plane it down and you get to, say, one of the um, finger parts, you'll see it more. Um, but the other side looks fine, so I could just choose one side. But other than that, finger joiners are really awesome. Um, and they help me glue these boards together stronger instead of just um, end gluing them. Uh, so that they won't break and so uh, now I won't have to add a back to this because it is strong enough to be held on its own um, and it is a decent thickness I mean it's not super thick or super thin I believe it's probably about um, five eighths of an inch um, which is a pretty decent and you know when I make my signs I don't want them to be super bulky and heavy because who wants a heavy bulky sign unless it is a giant sign um, but other than that, that is it for the finger joiner. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions or any tips and tricks for me um, on using this finger joiner, please let me know down below in the comments. I hope to see you guys in my next videos and stay tuned for many more because this coronavirus is taking over and I got plenty of time down here in the basement to work. So once again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.